Okay, so today I'm, I'm, we're gonna do a very quick scene um, inside of Modo. Um, one of my friends, Kevin Brewer, he uh, he asked me if I could quickly um, quickly set up a, a scene for him inside of inside of Modo, so that it could look good and you know, so he could sort of showcase his new model. This model is a polygon model, and um, and I'm just gonna. I'm going to show you guys how to quickly set something up inside of Modo using Modo's engine and um, and a lot of its presets and uh, and you can get something going really quick and and get a fairly nice result. I love Modo. Modo is one of my favorite rendering tools. I um, even the render engine I love a lot. Mostly to uh, today uh, in my own workflow and um, in my client workflow, I actually use Octane Render because it is um, a GPU based, so I could I could make the files a lot quicker but I also love Modo's uh, native renderer it's a great renderer so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on O and then on inactive mesh I'm gonna I'm gonna go make inactive same as active this way I could kind of like see what's going on right <clears throat> another another quick thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go control space and that way I could kind of change my view go to my right view and I want to I want to have it on the floor, you know, on the zero. So I'm gonna select this and shift, select the next one, and I press W, and now I can move it up. And I'll put it on the floor like that. There you go. Um, the next thing is I have to sort of check that he that everything is fairly textured, um, um separated correctly. So I think. This is all. This might be all one. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I want to shade this into this and this into different colors. So I'm gonna select it first, then hit uh, three to get the polygons, and then. And actually, I guess we could do it for all of them at the same time. So let's. Let me select this, 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 and then I'm gonna hit three. Like that, select all these wheels. Oh, look, there's another insert. Okay. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And then I'm going to make a new material for them. I'm just going to press M. And then we'll call this one Rim Color. And for right now, we'll make it like a dark, like a dark gray. That. And then the inside of these wheels, no, oh, they're kind of all, they're all one thing, so it's fine. We're gonna select all of these. Oh, whoops. Ah. And we'll call this break disc. And then this one will keep a bit. On the lighter gray. And um, I'm kind of thinking about these bolts. Might as well. I always like them to be a little different than the wheel just because, I don't know, it makes it seem more real. So M bolts. And this one will even go lighter. Okay, so let's just start. Let's. I'm gonna go here to my render tab, and when I press play, see so far everything's fairly simple. You know, there's nothing really in the scene. Um, he already sort of colored things in a very simple shaders. And um, you know, obviously, there's no environment, um, but you know, so far everything looks fairly good for for where we're at in the process. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is press F6, and these presets come out. And I'm gonna actually just start using these very, very um, liberally because it sort of starts to fill up your 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 scene. So first, I'm gonna go meshes, and then basic. And then I'm, I'm going to add a shadow catcher. So I double click. 
and then see now we have a shadow capture. And then um, uh, I'm gonna go into F6 again. And if we go here to materials, they have a bunch of materials. They have enhanced modal materials. They have, um, but what we're looking for is paint. So we go to here, painted, car. And here we already have a nice like selection, right? That's, um, I got a feeling that maybe, maybe this dark blue. And all you have to do is basically draw, uh, drag and drop and then let it go. And then see now we already have something going. Um, actually, I feel like there was a really cool one down here. Let me see. I guess maybe this one. This one's really nice. Maybe a little darker with some flex, um, uh, metallic flakes into them. Okay. Now for uh, and then like for example these wheels, right? I can um, I could go here to metals. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I want it. Um, let's see. Because a lot of times what I'm really doing is I'm just kind of, I just want to get something that's close to what I want and then I'll do a lot of custom customization, right? Kind of want like a um, dark a dark chrome, like a dark matte chrome, basically like a gunmetal. But I don't think it has a gunmetal here, but we could, al we could always make one and I'll, I'll show you guys how I do that too. So give me one second. Mm. Let's see how let's see how this platinum looks. So go drag and drop. All right, and then I'm gonna use like a matte. I'm, I'll just I'll actually no, I'll do matte chrome. And and for right now, I'll put that in the background for the for the wheel for the brake. And also, I you know they had that that um. They had they have this little red caliper, and I think I'm gonna go into my. Wasn't there like a powder coat in the paints? So there you go. Oh, but I don't like that. Let's go to let's go to car paints, and I'm just gonna paint it crystal red metallic. Ah, whoops! I I, I clicked on the wrong one. So Control Shift, Control Z to undo that. And let me try that again. There you go. There you go. It's very subtle to change, but it's a. Uh, it looks good. Another thing I wanted to do is light these up, right? It doesn't have. He has some lights here, right? I feel like these we could light up. So let's let's select them, and then let me see how he actually developed these. Okay. It looks like he already had a, a bit of an idea here, right? So I wonder what, it, let's see. I'm trying to figure out where that is. There we go, oh, whoops. I wonder what, what material that is, let's see. So uh, basically I'm trying to find what, what material this is, right? And, um, and let me go back to my model and I want to see because it looks like there's some sort of halo here, and I don't know where. Let me see. I could, that's cool too. We can make that chrome. Okay, so but the first first things first. I'm trying to find this stuff, and then I'm gonna go four, three, hide, and then here I'm gonna hit four, and then that way it'll let me select the shade. Oh. Okay. Okay, this doesn't this doesn't have any. It's just it's just the base shader right now. So what I'm gonna do is select those by actually what I'm doing is I'm doing a loop select. So I'm selecting this and this, and I press L, and then that that uh that gets me that. And I need to get those too. So I'm gonna first hide these so I can get two of them by selecting them, pressing H, and then click click L, click click. Oh man, if you press Control. And click on something, it deselects it. L. Click, click, L. Click, click, L. And then I'm gonna press M. We're gonna go very light. And we're gonna call this uh, halos. Right? 
And then here under materials, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on these little tabs right here, material trends. And then under here, that's the luminosity. So I'm going to go like maybe, maybe five. And so now this is going to start emitting light. And, um, and since these are covered up in, in, uh, in, in, um, with glass, I'm not going to worry too much about all this inside stuff. So, um, let me unhide by, I press shift U to unhide all of these stuff, all of this stuff. <clears throat> and then all this stuff, all right, is there any other? I'm going to make it chrome. So uh, let's go M and we're going to make it chrome. And then I'm going to go back into my presets now that I made it into a material and go into my metals. Where are my metals here? Chrome. And I'm going to drag and drop it into this thing. So there you go. And now let's see what we got so far. Very cool. So what about our environment? Let's see, even without, honestly, even without an environment, I think, I think this looks good already. But uh, I want to show you guys how to get something nice, nice and clean done. So, uh, then we're going to go back into our presets and you can um, you can go here right to environments and it has a bunch of these environments you know so like I don't know let's just let's just double click them just kind of like see see what type of result we get you know mm, that's already looking real good let's see how does this look And if you see, there's like a double shadow here. That's because um, we're getting two sources of light. We're getting the HDRI, and we're also getting this directional light. So what I'm going to do is hide the directional light. So see, now I only have one light. The only thing about this environment is, besides the fact that it's kind of weird, like if we look at it from afar, oh, actually, that looks kind of cool. But um, I actually al I also want to show you guys what ha how you can add your own uh, HDRIs. It's super easy. But let me let me just check out the other ones too. You know, uh, when, a lot of times when I'm rendering, uh, I'm just always like just checking all these out and seeing the different lighting conditions. But sometimes they inspire me. Sometimes you know I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a dumb idea. But you know, it's so easy to to um, you know just do it that that I'm always I'm always going back and forth. This one would be cool, but I think uh, I think the, the HDRI is a bit is a bit weird in the in the scaling. You could always you could always uh, like that's kind of cool, right? Something like that. Let's see, maybe we could get the other angle like that. No. So even though this is really cool, a really cool lighting. Let me see. Oh, there's a little heliport helipad, huh? Let's see. And th that that's a really good thing about Moto is that the, the all this stuff is already included with it. So it's really, you know, all I'm right, all all of this except for the model, obviously. All of this is just preset stuff, you know. And um, but like let's say that you wanted. Oh, let's see this one. Let's say you wanted to add your own, right? That's really cool too. What a weird floor. Oh, that's because of the shadow. Okay. You just need to add more samples. See here, like we can start seeing how cool the, the flake is going to look, right? Um, this image in general is very tiny. You know, if I go here to my render settings and here I see frame, it's 1280 by 720, which is really not that, not that, um, not that much, you know, so I'm seeing if they have presets, but I think we have to do it by ourselves, I guess. So I'll make it 1280 by 2560. 
there we go so that way we can have a little more uh, more detail and obviously it's going to be much bigger um, yeah so let's say let's say that you wanted to actually make your own uh, your own environment right or you wanted to add an HDRI that you bought off the streets or something like that it's a uh, very easy you go to here shading um, right now I'm under my render tab and then here we got environment right and these are all the different environments that I have right now and uh, and this environment in particular is quite is quite complex because it has a background a reflection and all this you know different different HDRIs for it but um, the first thing I'm gonna do is is I guess I could just delete all these like that and then here under environment I'm gonna go add add layer image map load image and now I'm gonna look for my different HDRIs and I have I think maybe this desert maybe this HDRI in particular was um, was provided by CGI backgrounds.com they're actually friends of mine and they they have really good HDRI backgrounds and backplates I highly suggest you um, you check them out as you see here, the background is showing up. So I click on an environment and I make sure that visible to camera is clicked on. So um, so just make sure that in your settings, you can see the background. See, and now we have a nice, a nice little desert environment. Now, um, if you see, I have a sun hitting this way. And if I look at my shadow, it's not really looking like that so I'm actually I'm gonna bring back my directional light all right to give myself a lot sharper shadows and then I'm gonna I'm gonna give it the same direction where this Sun is at right so if we see our Sun over here I know that this light needs to rotate if I select it uh, off the Y it needs to rotate this way Like that. So now if I kind of like, there you go. And I feel like maybe it's a little higher up. So I want to rotate it down, which I think would be this one. No, uh, this one. There you go. And see, now we have a nice little little rendering. Maybe something like that, right? And there. So to actually render, I feel like this might be a little. I want to I want to check out the this rubber material. And uh, and see where it's at. So let's go to shading. I right, hear rubber tire. And I the specular. We're gonna go down. I feel like it's a little too white. And then also just the regular color, I'm just gonna go much darker. There you go, well, not that dark like that. There you go. And so, now that I have this sort of like scene set up, I kind of wanna um, go back to my presets, F6 and go to materials and I want to check out some other colors you know there might be there might be with this with this background you know we, we could sort of check something out like maybe in white it might look better I don't know let's see oh whoops I got the wrong <laughs> I painted the wheel let me try that again there we go Oh my god, don't tell me I got the wheel again. Ugh, hold on. Ah! There we go. Hold on. Uh, okay. I swear, this time I'm totally, I'm totally gonna hit the car and not the wheel. There we go. Mm. 
Let's see how it looks. This little, this candy apple red is one of my favorites. So let's see, maybe in candy apple. Everyone loves candy apple, right? I know I do. Oh, that's nice. Or let's see with, um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Which one's the best one so far? I feel like with these sort of like, um, retro, retro future cars, you know, like, I feel like even, even warm whites are, are kind of good for them, you know, like kind of like a retro sort of color. Mmm. That's really nice. <laughs> oh, and then another thing. Mm, never mind. I was gonna say, like, let's say, let's say, for example, the, I kind of like this one the most, actually. Um, let's say, for example, um, you know, I'm trying to see if there's enough haze in the, in the environment. You know, there's a little bit of clouds. And also, if I look at it like this, oh, actually, that does kind of look right. I feel like maybe, I feel like that's not the right direction. So that's, like, I feel like more this way. Ooh. Oh, okay. So you know how there's a little bit of haze in the in the little bit of clouds in the sky. That usually means that the shadows are gonna have a bit of a blur, and you see how um, sharp the shadow is. Uh, to give it more of a blur, you click on your directional light, and then um, the spread angle is what you're looking for here under directional light, spread angle. And then I don't know. Let me go. It's not that. It's not that hazy. So maybe like ten percent, right? Another thing too. Well, actually, well, and also if like let's say if I if my if I t turn down the radiant radiant exudance down to like two, it um it um it sort of like lowers the power of the of the light. And I think I think uh, for me I think I think it's um, I don't know maybe black but I kind of like this 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 cream one I might do I might do a couple different colors and see which one he likes the most but I like this cream but yeah so so basically this is this is my workflow inside of Modo um, and I know I feel like a lot of people are gonna ask me different questions of like maybe Modo versus V Red or anything like that um, personally myself. Uh, I do use V-RED on occasion, but for my own personal projects and a lot of my client projects, I almost always use Modo with Octane, uh, just because, uh, one, the costs are a lot easier. Um, you know, these things, uh, I think my licenses uh, for both of these were like under $1,000, like infinite license. And secondly, I just really like the workflow of Modo. Modo is one of my favorite 3D applications. And I liked how it's how its animation works, how its shadows work, how its materials work, how how everything works on it. So um, so I, I always highly recommend people trying out Modo, and um, and see for yourself what, what you like more. You know, in the end of the day, it's all about getting the right image across. There's no, I don't think there's such a thing as some one one software being better than the other. As long as because in the end, it's just ray tracing. You know, it's just doing different calculations. Some are a little faster at doing it. Some, uh, some are 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 um, as uh, streamlined. But in the end, if uh, if the whatever you're using is giving you a result that you like and uh, your clients like, then that's the correct result. You know, like like don't don't worry so much about about what um, you know. Uh, oh, is this is this thing better or is that thing better? You know, just sort of just sort of. Uh, um, you know, whatever works for you is, is the correct answer. But I highly, always highly, highly recommend trying out Modo. It's one of my favorite. I love using Modo. Um, yeah, so yeah, let me, uh, I'm going to render these out. And, and as I talk, I'll, I'll, p I'll put the final renderings on the, on the screen. And, and as you can see here, here they are. Actually, I don't know what they look like. I'm still recording, <laughs> but I'm sure they look very pretty. And, uh, I hope that, um, that you guys learned, um, some nice little, quick workflow inside of Modo. Big thanks to um, CGIbackgrounds.com um, for providing me with this uh, HDRI and um, and the whole library of them. Uh, they're all they're, they're very good, very high quality. Uh, I suggest you guys take a look at it. 
And obviously, I always suggest everyone try out Modo and render with it. I love it. It's a, it's a great software. Um, I hope you guys have a nice day. Good luck on your 3D journey. And, um, and yeah, see, see you guys next time.